Once again, we make a return to the fantastic Tunbridge circuit, the boarded circuit that we know is a permanent circuit in the UK that continually produces fantastic racing. The reason we've returned here this Sunday, though, is just something a bit special. This is round four of the World Long Track, a six-round competition that really does stretch all across Europe. Some fantastic riders that we know are really in strong competition with each other. Last year's defending champion, Mr. Robert Barth, is here to try and defend his title. He knows that he is obviously the favourite. He's been winning round one, he won round two, he had a comfortable ride in third place in round three. And this really, if you say we are now 50% of the way through the competition, this is where the decisions have to be made. Who can come through? Can our own Kelvin Tatum, with plenty of British support behind him, produce something? He's ridden on this track many, many times, and we know that he knows how to get round Tunbridge, and it could be a home win for Kelvin. We've got full support races in solo support, national level, of course, and we've got the 1,000cc sidecars. That one in itself will be interesting because we had the first round of the Super Cup here. Did they learn a lot? Have they perfected those Speedway outfits for Tunbridge? It promises to be a great day's racing, and I certainly at the moment wouldn't really want to predict who's going to do the winning. Well, of course, I think when I'm talking about the sidecars here today, it really is a return to Tunbridge because John Horsey, of course, we saw the first round of the Sidecar Super Cup. Does that mean everybody's going to be using the Speedway style outfits? Yeah, I think so. Most people will be on Speedway bikes today. It's, it's very slick out there. It's really, really hard. So I think, yeah, it's, it's going to be Speedway bikes today for sure. And interesting, perhaps, that um, the Australian Darren Delora stayed here as well. I mean, he likes this track, is what he says to me. Um, do you think he's going to be the man to beat? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, this is just, it's, it's in da Darren's hands today, really. This is, you know, what they ride on back home in Oz is exactly what we've got here today. So Darren's definitely going to be the man to beat today. But I think without putting too much pressure on you, you know, you have got the results at the moment. You've got the Super Cup. Great ride down at Rose Minutes last week. And he must have sat back and seen that, you know, you're capable of, of winning even on circuits like this. Oh, yeah, we, we've been over to Robbie Wilson's where Darren's staying and um, we've had a few beers and we've had a talk. And, uh, yeah, the, the grass track scene, he can't really understand. He, he can't understand how we ride this week in and week out with a few stones and the bumps that we have. But, <laughs> but the, like you say, Tom Ridge is just made for the Australians, I'm afraid. So, um, yeah, we'll be doing the chasing today. Well, Jace, if I can just quickly bring you in, because it has been a busy time and uh, obviously the emphasis today being on the long track, but the sidecar competition is going to be tough, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's proven, to, to be honest, bringing Darren and the likes of them over, I think it's only pushed us forward and I think we've all had to step up a gear to catch them up and, you know, week by week we're trying better and better and, and get, seem to be getting the results. Well, absolutely. I can't disagree with any of that. And obviously, depending on the conditions today, we know it's looking like being dusty at the moment. Depends how the track staff look after it, but promises to be a great day's racing. Yeah, I think it will be. It looks good. Well, best of luck, guys, and hopefully we'll be speaking to you later on. Thanks, Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Well, I thought I'd have a quick word with you, Darren, because I know this is a return to Tunbridge for you just in this racing season. You were here for the first round of the Super Cup. Fantastic to see you've stayed. And what I've just heard from John Halsley is that they all reckon you're the man to catch today. Yeah, they said that at the Super Cup the first round too, and uh, we, we come second. Oh, Matt Fimarola, he done us in, and um, like we struggled at the first round because the track was pretty slick and dusty, and uh, our motor was a bit strong for that, that first round, but since then uh, we've flattened the motor off a bit, and hopefully I can get a bit more drive this week and uh, prove what we should have done in the first round. Well, I think that really is, you know, as I say, fantastic to see you've stayed here for so long. I know you've had a go at the grass tracks, and that was a bit different for you. But this is more of the sort of tracks that you race at home, isn't it? Yeah, the size is. Uh, just the, the dust and the, the slickness of the tracks is a little bit different. But, you know, that's it's the same for everyone, so you just got to get on with it. And uh, I'm just glad that I'm on my speedway bike this week, because I much prefer to ride something that you're comfortable with and you know, <laughs> not something that, you know, it's different riding style and different setups. So... I'm just glad I'm on the Speedway bike. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, walking around the pits this morning, everybody's chosen Speedway-style outfits. I think that's going to be the racing style today. And I think it's going to be very, very quick. I mean, as you say, changing conditions, perhaps, as we go through the day. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely the way to go, the Speedway bike. It is, uh, it's basically just a big Speedway, isn't it? Um, it's got a fence and it's round and, you know, it's smooth. <laughs> so it's not grass and it's not rough and there's no rope. So I think you'd be mad if you didn't run a Speedway bike. And... Uh, time will tell there's a few blokes with grass bikes and uh, we'll see at the end of the day which one's the best one well indeed we will as i say it's a long day to get through we've got a lot of racing you never know it could be that they're all saying you're the man to catch today we might see you at the end of the day yeah it's easy saying that they're probably just putting the pressure on me but you know we uh 
we're going to be doing our best, and uh, like I want, I want to win today because we, like, we missed out the first round of Super Cup, so it'd be nice just to walk away with a, a win here, and um, you know maybe that might encourage us to come back for the bonfire burn up. So we'll just see how we go. Well, fingers crossed on that one. Thanks, yeah, Darren. Time will tell. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers mate. <laughs> sure of as of yet so three rounds to go this really as I say is 50% of the way through the competition we've got the riders being brought to the start line for our official introductions to you so with no more to do I will say welcome once again to what promises to be a fantastic fourth round for the world long track decisions could be made today without doubt the tournament is being dominated by uh, the defending champion from Germany Mr Robert Barr he has won the first round, won the second round, and pulled in with a third place behind our two Brits, of course, Kelvin Tatum and Paul Hurry in Marmont. So what will happen in round three? And as the quick adverts go, we've got obviously a lot of stalls around here this afternoon. DNR Leisure are here with all their sportswear, but also I've just been told by Grasser that if you want to wave your Brit Prague, then they have Union Jacks on sale for just one pound. So let's brighten the place up a little bit. Let's give a bit of colour, plenty of support. So I will now go and join the riders out on the circuit and we'll do the official introductions to this round four of the 2003 World Long Track Championships. Thank you, Ben. Some very important people this afternoon because uh, in charge of the jury, the jury president this afternoon, from France, Christian Bion. Welcome, Christian, and of course, a very important person here this afternoon. I know you have been here before, sir, from Germany, the referee this afternoon, Frank Ziegler. And we, of course, we hope that they don't have too much to reside over this afternoon. We know the competition is going to be fast and furious. So let's introduce those competitors to you as we start with riding number one from the Netherlands, Mick Thorne. Then joining us on the line, the riders from Germany and certainly in with uh, a good chance this afternoon of getting through that last ditch ride. It is, of course, the European champion last season, Zig Schubach. 
One rider that I know a lot may have been betting on this morning. Of course, I should remind you, you can place a bet on the racing this afternoon. We've got a ride here of great talent who has ridden this track before. Good risk. Also from Germany, riding number 10 this afternoon, Ralph Loading. Next to Ralph, we've got also from Germany, Enrico Janoska. Now keep your eye on this one because this is one rider that I mentioned earlier is top of the world long track at the moment. He won round one, he won round two, it is of course Robert Mark. Yes, Robert, a competitor that's raced against him many, many times from Germany, Van Dana. Also, we stay with the German riders, riding number three this afternoon, the Stefan Cat. And lastly, from the German contingent, a very strong competitor, have been riding the long track many seasons, number two this afternoon, Matthias Kuga. Right, we now move to uh, from Denmark, riding number 12, Ryan Gaga. He brought some support with him. From France, next to him we've got uh, Stefan Tesoro. They give him yes now. Next to him, uh, riding number... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got another one of our uh, last uh, six riders coming in. No, he's not. He is. We'll get this sorted from the Netherlands. Number four, Tio Piper. Rider number 16 from the Czech Republic, Zednash Schneiderman. Well, we've got also uh, in this uh, race one, which is the last qualifying phase, number one, indeed, uh, Anthony Spar. Oh, yeah. Also, we've got uh, from Australia, hoping to get a ride in uh, round four of the World Long Track this afternoon with that last ditch qualifier. Race number one this afternoon, taking one will be Shane Parker. Right, now we, before we move on to the UK riders, I've just been told I've missed number 15, Toffee Boss. My apologies. Understand. Playing the first is going to be... Yeah. <laughs> right, we move then to the British riders and riding number 13 this afternoon. I want to see a lot of support for this rider. You know exactly who it is. Our number one, Kelvin Tinsel. Next to him, another one that's hoping to get a ride this afternoon, Ben Phillips. That was his at the end. Of course, I should have remembered, of course, next to uh, Kelvin is Andrew Appleton. A lot of those were support, I'm sure, for number 11, Bob Murray. And I hope that this will get a very big round of applause. That one good ride this afternoon, he's in the world long track, Jeremy Lancaster. I know there's already been the questions asked, could we put a bet on this guy this afternoon to get through? It is, of course, the youngster, Paul Cooper! So that doesn't seem to make the line-up for the uh, afternoon. The credit is, as I'm sure you'll agree, a world-class line-up. But before we do any more this afternoon, can I please ask you all to be outstanding for the National Anthem? <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, while I've got uh, a run of 
of silence for the riders who will be making their way back to the truck to get back to the pits very importantly. But I'm very sorry to have to report to you that those of you support grass track and long track a lot will know that we have tragically lost through very, very strange circumstances a great supporter of the world of grass track racing. And I would ask you all if you would just bear with me for one minute silence in respect to the man that has done a lot of work behind the scenes for grass track. He's put a lot of effort into a lot of different race meetings, helped out with many different clubs. I would ask you, if you would, to show a woman's respect for a gentleman by the name of Les King that we tragically lost this season through very strange circumstances. Your thoughts, please.
rider in white. Serge Schubach has got to the front in that first turn as they go down the back straight. Schubach away from the rest of the field. Remember, it's four places that go through into the lineup for the fourth round of the world long track. And as a second. Paul Cooper is up in third place. Come on, let's see a supporting Paul Cooper. He's up in third place at the moment. He will get a ride in the world long track if he stays where he is. And they've started to pull away. Jeremy Longcastle, we think that is, has pulled out on the far side. But Zerg Schubach wanted to make sure that he's through the <laughs> Anthony Suave and Paul Cooper together in that third place. Remember, both of those places will qualify. Paul Cooper with third at the moment. Suave right on his tail, though, as they go down the back straight. And Paul Cooper looking for second as he goes into that pit turn. One more lap to go then. with that. Anthony Swab, the last of the qualifiers, and just missing out there in yellow is our own Glenn Phillips. To the world long track, round four here at Tunbridge and Mulling. We've got, from the very top, places for the rider in red, Anthony Swab, fourth. The rider in white, Serge Schubach, first place. The rider in white and black, our very own Paul Cooper, in second place. In blue, Jeremy Doncaster, no finish. In yellow, our own Glenn Phillips, that's in fifth place. Green, Shane Parker of Australia, finishing in third. The winning time was 127.60, 127.60, 56.13 they average. So it's very, very quick out there this afternoon. So we now go over the page and... Uh, we move to the first of our support races, the 500cc solo race two in your program, where we will see coming to the line, number one, Neville Tatum. You can see number six out there, James Cawthoray. Banks has made a very good start. He's got on the inside of him, number one, Neville Tatum. Those two have made the best of it into that first turn. Lies. The riders at the back of the field do, in fact, uh, have a lot of problems to contend with this afternoon. It's all about getting out in. And, uh, number two, Trevor Banks that leads. Number one, Neville Tatum, still there with him, but he's got competition coming around the outside. If I'm going to pick that up for you as they come by me, but you can see he's got himself right to the very front. yellow flag with uh, a fallen rider on the far side. afternoon is going to be the dust that's flying. So let's give you first of all the results of a race two in your program. It's the solo support race chart and we start with number one Neville Tatum no score. Number two Trevor Banks eight points. Number three Tim Nodes six points. Number six James Cawthoray five points. Number 38 Jason King no score. Number 41, Darren Rolfe, no score. Of course, Darren not taking part this afternoon. Number 50, Bevan Gilm Jarrett, four points. Number 71, a tremendous ride from Jamie Rogers, maximum 10 points. 
The time was 132.06, 132.06, an average speed of 53.41, 53.41. So, we've got the early points scored for the solo support race, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say that um, the referee and the jury president have called for a meeting with the officials of the club. Most of the top runners will be using sidecar style outfits, which are basically no suspension, rigid frames and in amongst them I can see that number 183 Ian Lee Amos and Paul Phillips have got the uh, traditional grass outfit as long as uh, with Matt from Marola and Andy Wilson and tremendous to see Andy Wilson back as pillion for Matt from Marola
But White Love it is, as there's a big uh, gaggle of riders in second place. Duncan Solas working his way through well and has got up the inside of Paul White Love. Those are the leaders that go into that drop in for the first time. Either Red Hughes up in third place behind Paul White Love. As they go off the apex of that bend, but into the bottom turn they go for the second time, and it is Duncan Tolles and Nicky Owen that lead from Paul White Lum and Michael Day. In second place, but it's Paul White Lum coming back in it. Into the top bend they go. He's on the inside of Paul White Lum, gets up in the second place. John Hiscott pulls off into the centre green, is causing problems further down the field for these riders, so they make their way to the centre green. We're left with three outfits on the circuit, and Duncan Solest isn't easing up at all as he goes into the pit bend for the third time. It's last lap flag time as he comes past me. Ivor Matthews establishing himself in second. Paul White and Mike Day still there in third place. This is where they expect me to do the lap score and I expect because we've only got three out there now as we see the chequered flag being made ready and coming to the line I'm sure pleased with his first ride conditions not at all perfect but to the chequered flag goes Duncan Tolhurst and uh, Nicky Owen. The line up for the sidecars this afternoon we start from the very top number nine Miles Simmons and Dave Hogan no score. Number 15 Ivan Matthews and Mick Stace five points. Number 57, Clive Stoneman and Roland Broomfield, no points. Number 74, Duncan Tolerst and Nicky Owen, seven points. Number 84, Darren Tullor and Jasper, no, they were in last race. Number 92, Paul Whitelow and Mike Day, four points. Number 184, John Hiscock and Nick Walters, no score. The winning time was 133.31, 133.31. 52.70, the average speed, 52.70. Well, at this point in the meeting, there was um, more or less a rider walkout over the conditions of the track, and uh, there were some very, very heated discussions between, well, heated to say the least. Um, I can't leave the sound on with what they were saying, unfortunately, because, um, like I said, the discussions got very, very heated, a lot of finger pointing, Don Godden not happy with what he discovered anyway, um, they were complaining about the condition of the track, which really wasn't down to the club at all. The FIM referee hadn't allowed them to prepare the track how they wanted to, and everyone knew it was going to be dusty because it was, it was packed down so hard. And where we've had a lot of this dry weather, um, you just couldn't get the water in the, in the soil. So, and these discussions went on for probably about two hours with a bit of track preparation. You can see Don Godden's not happy one little bit. Um, lots of, well, lots of abuse, lots of arguing, and uh, at the end of the day, they did decide to spend some time grading the track and digging the top layer up. Um, but obviously, it had to be done right across the circuit. There's the FIM referee. Um, he's the man who was actually responsible for the preparation of the track on the, on the day, um, and he didn't allow them to dig it up, but it had to be dug up. So. Um, Otherwise, they couldn't have raced on it. It was so dusty, as you've seen on the video, and anyone who was there uh, would not have seen hardly anything of the, the races what did take place. So, two hours later, um, they actually got on with it again, and it turned out to be okay. But um, lots of people not wanting to take the blame. I've got my own opinions, which I will have to keep to myself, but unfortunately, like I said, I can't put the sound on because um, the language got a bit um, on the ripe side, let's say. So... Um, riders are arguing with the referee. As you can see, the referee wasn't happy. He was telling the riders they should go out and ride. Um, lots of discussions went on. So I'll just and there's Paul Hurry there. Paul Hurry wasn't happy either. Um, it was extremely dangerous, as anyone knows who has raced. If you race in dust, you can't actually see if anyone's fallen off. So obviously, the last thing we want to happen in this sport is for someone to get hurt. And you know, at the Tunbridge track, they do go extremely fast and. Uh, you have to prepare the track as well as you can, especially for a world championship. So, but, so you can see these discussions went on for ages and ages, but um, there's no point in showing them all. Um, Robert Barth there expressing his opinion, but there's no point in showing it all because it just went on too long. So I'll, um, I'll cut it a bit short and we'll get on with the racing. Um, but as you can see, Dodd is still not happy having arguments with the FIM referee. But uh, we'll just get on with the racing, I think, best left alone. 
So as you can see, they had um, started to grade the track, um, but the inside was absolutely like concrete. It really wanted some work on. You can see a strip of water where they put it down. They was watering. They got these railway sleepers on there to try and get it to dig in. But it's like trying to dig up the M1, I would imagine. Um, and as for this, well, um, people sitting on there, to me, I know it's got to be done, but my God, is that dangerous. You only want one of them guys to fall off. And... Uh, you all have all hell let loose but after a couple of hours they actually got the track in a raceable condition um, and it was ever so good but uh, looks a bit like a plough field but um, it was rideable they they walked with it done all the work they could and turned out to be okay so as I said we got on with the race Exactly where he wants to be. All over 
Ferrari at the moment back in fourth place, looking for third as he goes down that back straight. But it is, Robert Martin has got away, into the pit bend he goes for the first time. What is he going to make of the conditions? He looks to be very happy at the moment as he leaves, going past us. It's Stefan Desario that is in second place. Paul Hurry holding that first one at the moment, getting closer and closer to Desario as they go down that back straight. And Robert Path it is that's setting the pace. He's seen his fellow countryman, Marius Kruger, set the pace in the last race. And he's out there to emulate that. Remind you that he is, of course, leading the competition overall at the moment. He's a master of mass of 68 points from his free ride. Closest to him is a run Kelvin Tatum on 52. Gerdris on 46 and Paul Hurry on 45. So one more lap to go for Robert Bath to record his first win this afternoon. Still Stefan Desario is in uh, second place. Paul Hurry still holding that third. And Enrique Oscar trying to stay with Paul Hurry getting close as they go down that back straight. Oh, just the chequered flag this time as they come round and it is Robert Bath that takes the victory. Stefan Desario in second, number 11, Paul Hurry in third. So a good start to the afternoon for Robert Bath, who's leading the competition after three rounds. Robert Bath scored five points. Number eight, Stefan Desario scored four points. Number nine, Enrique Yamoska, two points. Number 10, Ralph Loading. Zero. Number 11, Paul Hurry, three points. Number 12, Ryan Carger, one point. The winning time was 124.06, 58.50, 124.06, 58.50. Cooper and exclusion. 
The winning time, 122.85, 59.35 the average, 122.85, it was 5 points for number 13, 4 for 14, 0 for 15, 3 for 16, 2 for 17, and 0 for 18. Uh, if you're wondering what that siren was, that of course was the uh, two minute warning for riders to get to the start line. Riding in that green helmet colour, that is the French rider, Stéphane Desario. Looking for number one, the rider in white, that is from the Netherlands, uh, Mick Groen. Number 17 uh, is Zerk Schubach. Stefan Kat from Germany, four points. 
Number eight, Stefan Desario, five points. Number ten, Ralph Loading, one point. Number fifteen, Bibos, three points. Number seventeen, Serge Schubach from Germany, no score. The winning time was 126.43, 126.43, an average of 56.89. Open 
up a big, big gap between him, him and fellow countryman Robert Barth. That's a wide circuit that he's riding good wrist, but it's certainly a very quick one. Still the battle rages for that third place. Paul Hurry doing everything he can to hang on to third, but he's under pressure. And he gets very, very close again going down that back straight. Nurgin, watch for the chequered flag being prepared. I'm sure all eyes are on that third place as we see Gerdris flying off that bottom turn. He takes the win. Robert Bath in second. Paul Hurry hangs on to third. Very quick time for Gerd Riss in that one. Let's give you the points from the top because riding in red was number four, T.O. Piper. He gets two points from that ride. Riding in blue, number six, Andrew Appleton, one point. Riding in black and white, number seven, Robert Bath, four points. Riding in white, number 11, Paul Hurry, three points. Riding in green, number 14, Gerd Riss, Five points. And in yellow, number 18, Paul Cooper, no score. The winning time, a very quick one, as I mentioned. 122.99, 122.99. They're averaging 59.25. Uh, on nine points from two rides, he's up there with the top point scorers. It is the German, Matthias Kruger. He rides in green. He's out here on what is gate four could certainly carry him into the bend. Number seven, Robert Barth, on that's nine points as well as Kruger. He goes in the white helmet color in what looks to be gate three. Right on the inside, number 18 is Paul Cooper out again, and number 15 is Uppy Boss.
Jeff Stobber as they go into that first turn. It's Van Dana that's got himself to the front in the red helmet colour. He gets himself to the front as they sort themselves out coming out of that first turn. It's all very tight and Van Dana's going down. Van Dana puts it down going into that pin bend. Everybody fortunately misses him and I wonder if he's going to be okay to get up. He looks to be as the lead is overtaken now by T.O. Piper. T.O. Piper it is. We're expecting a lot more from T.O. Disappointing first two rides, but he looks to have got it together this time. The rider in green is Zednak Schneiderwein that's in second. Paul Hurry in third at the moment. Paul Hurry looking to get a better line out of that bottom bend. He comes past Zednak as he goes into this top turn. That's clever riding from Zednak Schneiderwein who tries to cut underneath him going into that turn. But as they go down the back straight, it is T.O. Piper that's setting the pace. Tries to take the line from Zednek as he goes into this top turn. But Zednek Schneiderwein comes back at him and he's got a much better drive out of that top turn. Paul Hurry forced to go on the outside line. He'll have to drive hard. Race 15, that was leg 8 of the fourth round of the world long track. A win and maximum five points for, from the Netherlands, Dio Piper. Number five, Brad Dana, zero points there. And uh, number 10, Ralph Loading, two points. Number 11, Paul Hurry, four points. Number 16, ZNX Schneiderwein, three points. And number 17, Serge Schubach, one point. The winning time was 125.36, 125.36, averaging 57.61, and incredible times there that we've seen in the first two of these third leg rides, 125.37 and 125.36. Number three, Stefan Katz shaking his head as he comes to the line, I don't know some sort of indication to the referee, but he's come to the line. He rides in green. He's in the black and white helmet colour. Now we have seen a lot of good starts from this outside gate. Will it prove to be for Stefan Zaliu? Because he's on nine points of two rides. He's up there with all the top point scorers. Number 14, Gerd Riffs. Also on nine points of two rides. He rides in red on the inside. Number 13, Calvin Tatum on seven points from two rides. Stefan Desario in third place 
And uh, Stefan Cat following him home in fourth. Of the third leg rides, it's leg nine in your program. Race 16 is listed as we start for the rider in green. Number three, Stefan Cat with two points. Number six, Andrew Appleton, no score. Number eight, Stefan Desario, three points. Number nine, Enrique Oscar, one point. Number 13, Calvin Tatum, maximum five points. Number 14, Gerd Riss, four points. The winning time was 127.02. 127.02, 56.51, that equates to 56.51. 10 points. Those, he needs a good score here. Seven, the average speed. So we're 